hi everybody uh, welcome to this week's assembly I don't have a bike this week and I am outside rather than being inside it's, wet, it's a wet wet evening um, I decided to come up here and a lot of you might recognize it um, it's not a river it's not too far from where most of you live um, it is a canal and it is one of a number of canals in the country now Ireland doesn't have many canals really uh, but this is one of the longest canals in the country and it runs from here or from Dublin city centre all the way across the country to um, the Shannon and this canal is known as the Grand Canal Now we have two canals that are very close to each other this one here the Grand Canal and another one that passes by Leakslip in Blanchestown that area and that's called the Royal Canal now this place was built it took about 50 years to build this canal it was built by 1803 so you can work out when they started building this and they what they wanted to do was connect uh, Dublin with the um, with the Shannon why it took so long well they hit a big bog a bog is a big marshy ground um, about 30 kilometers from here it's called a bog of Allen and they had awful difficulty trying to cut across that bog so it took them over 50 years to get this now the main reason why they built the canal at the time was you see going back in history um, the main routeways across the country there was one ma major routeway and I'll go back a bit one major routeway across the country and it was called an Esker now you might have heard the name Esker in around Lucan uh, Esker it was known as actually and we're actually not too far from the Esker here in Adamstown which I think is on, might be on the Esker and that was um, what that came that was a, a river that flowed under the ice when this country was covered in ice the river that flowed under the ice it dropped all these rocks and stones so eventually when the ice melted back there was a big hump like a routeway a big hump a hill it stretched all the way across the country all the way over to the Shannon and it passes us here in Lucan not too far from Adamstown um, so people used that back in the Bronze Age about 6,000 5,000 years ago to travel across the country from then up to nowadays there were a couple of, up to the time of the canals there were a number of roads coming in out of Dublin but they couldn't shift or move too much heavy stuff across the country so that's why I decided to build these canals now these canals really this canal the last boat to come up this canal was back in 1960 it was back in 1960 which you can figure out how many years ago was that Not, okay good while ago the reason the canals uh, became lost popular is because the trains came on around the 1850s and 1860s and you might notice that there's a train line running right down beside our school which is running along the canal here so it's a major major routeway now of course then the cars and the big motorways superseded it so we have two canals one either side of Adamstown we also have the River Liffey and we have a railway track running down beside us another one running down beside Leakslip near Intel and uh, then we have two major roads which is the N4 and the N7 so they run down along here as well now it is absolutely beautiful now you think when you come to Lucan all you see is houses and three bedroom semi D's and I live in one of those and all of those different things but it's absolutely stunning now I'm going to see if I can switch this across I don't think I can but it is really 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 stunning but if you ever want to go for a walk here along the canal you have to be really really careful because it is quite dangerous now if you look over here this is the 12th lock this is just beside uh, us many of you have come up here and you might hear it's very, very loud because we have what looks like a waterfall over here. Now, it's very dangerous and young boys and girls should not be coming near here because it's very easy to fall in there and it's extremely deep. But that's a lock. And do you know what the lock is for? When the barge or the boats come down the canal, they have to work their way into the city and it has to be very, very, very flat. So the only way to get the, um, to get the boats down, they have to open those gates there. That's a lock gate. Open the gates. The boat comes in, the water fills up, the boat comes in, then they close the gate and then they open that go gate and the water uh, goes down again and the boat goes down and is able to go, uh, go off down along the canal. So this is um, the canal, there's a fantastic walk from here all the way to Salins, if you look all the way down there. It was mentioned in the Irish Times about um, last week as in the top 50 uh, walks in around, um, around Ireland, actually. It's a beautiful walk and it's well worth watching. And you can, uh, well worth taking, I should say, and you can see Adamstown not too far from 
um, from this uh, towpath. This is the towpath because the barges used to come up along here and the horse would be along the side here and <coughs> the, um, the horse would pull the barge up and along. Now, as I said, it is extremely dangerous. It's very, very deep. It's not a place to come on your own. You have to come with your parents and you can take that walk all the way up there. If you look at the rocks here, see these rocks here? They're big cut flagstones. A lot of those, I figure, came down from Wicklow and maybe some, some parts of here as well. The granite ones would come from Wicklow. This is limestone. It's kind of a very grey, so that may, may be around here more so. And here then are the buildings. These buildings then uh, were used as part, um, like hotels and restaurants or whatever, for the travellers who came up and down along the canal. So, if you are going, I'd like to go for a nice walk, Maybe you suggest it to, uh, to your parents and head up along there. It is really, really beautiful and well worth visiting. Bye bye for now. All the best. outside when the weather is good it's good for you to play outside will you try it with me play outside see you soon hi everybody ashling here in school i'm just in clearing my classroom and organizing all the lovely projects and books hope everybody is keeping well and making the most of this time at home. Um, I'm just going to read out the birthdays from this week and the birthdays that are coming up in the next few days. So we have Leon from Chloe's class. We have Mikhail from Georgina's class. We have Adavita from Chloe's class. Morella in Anne-Marie's class. Philip in Alva Harrison's class. Pretty in Mona's class, Emily in Kevin's class, Anthony in Zara's class, Danis in Alva Harrison's class, Opamantu in Emily's class, and Olivia in Olivia's class. So I hope everybody who I called out there has either had a lovely birthday or will have a lovely birthday in the next few days. And I hope to see you all soon and stay safe. Hi everybody, I am missing everyone so much and cannot believe that we have only two weeks left of this school year. It has just gone so, so fast. I hope everyone is keeping well and I'm going to tell you about something that I've really loved doing while we've been off. So, beside where I live, I'm very lucky that I live really near to a canal and I've been going for walks every single day. And I've noticed so many changes from springtime to summertime. There's changes in the trees, there's changes in the plants. Every time I go for a walk, I notice something different. The swans have had their cygnets, the ducks have had their ducklings, and there's so many different things to see. So this week, while I was out for my walk, I decided to try and find a nature rainbow. So I tried to find something for every colour of the rainbow. So here's what I found. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I found on my nature rainbow hunt. Maybe you could try and find some different things. Bye everybody.
Hi everyone. Um, what I was practicing, this is what I've been doing at home, is practicing my skills out in the back garden. What I was meant to do is married on a seven, foot, foot, knee, knee, shoulder, shoulder and head. If any of you can do it, I'd love to see because I'm struggling with it. Um, what I'm here to talk to you about is next week. We have active week happening in the school. Now, this week every year, it always brings a lot of fun and excitement. This year, I know we're at home, but we can still have lots of fun. We've uploaded lots of videos, lots of content for you to do. We're having our own Olympic Games next week. So I want you to think about what country you're going to represent. I want you to think of the colours you might wear for that country. And think of the flag you might have with you for that week. All you need for next week are a couple of things. You need, instead of, if you have cones, brilliant. If you don't have them, I've been using tin cans. They can be used. You need a measuring tape to measure your distance to events. And you need a stopwatch to record your time. I'm trying to have done things in order for next week and we'll have lots and lots of fun and I can't wait to see all the videos you put up and really hope you enjoy the week. Best of luck. We are so proud of all the work that you have been doing. Let's take a look at what some of you have been up to. Hello everyone, my name is Adavita. I finished reading all the seven books of Harry Potter series in the last two months of the lockdown. I'm going to review three of my favorite books. The first one is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The main characters are Harry, Ron, Hermione and Voldemort. It is about the Philosopher's Stone. Harry, Ron, Hermione and Voldemort are trying to get it because if they don't get it, the drinker will never die. Voldemort is bad. Harry, Ron and Hermione are working together and are under the invisibility cloak. Harry and his friends got the stone, but it got destroyed at the end. My rating of the book is 9 out of 10 because I don't like Voldemort. The second book I chose is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Is it, it, the main characters are Harry and Voldemort. It is about the Chamber of Secrets. There is a diary, a memory of a boy called Tom Riddle, also known as Voldemort. Tom trapped Guinea in the Chamber of Secrets. Harry came, killed Tom and saved Guinea. My rating of the book is 9 out of 10 because I don't like Voldemort trapping Guinea. The last book I chose is my favourite and it is called Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. The main characters are Harry and Voldemort. It is about the Deathly Hallows which are the Elder Wand, Resurrection Stone and the Invisibility Cloak. Harry has the Invisibility Cloak and as Dumbledore died, Voldemort has the Elder Wand. Snape is now the headmaster of Hogwarts. Voldemort killed Snape. Harry came to Snape and got his memory. Then Harry had a fight with Voldemort and killed Voldemort. My rating of the book is 10 out of 10 because Voldemort is dead. Yay! I'm going to read more of J.K. Rowling's books. Bye! From me to my family. Everyone is kind to me. From my sister to my brother, to my mother to my father. I have lots of toys, which I like to share with joy. I love animals, which I love to see. Some live on land and some in the sea. My mother is a doctor who saves lives. My father is an engineer who makes sides. This COVID-19 is really sad, but I think my family got what it takes to be dad. Hi, I'm going to tell you 10 tips on how to save habitats. Number one, recycle your computer. If you have cell phones or computers you don't use anymore, be sure to recycle them properly because they have a mineral that's really important. So let's reuse our cell phones and computers and like that we don't have to go to mother nature, kill habitats and get more minerals. Number two, replace paper metal by email. The more paper we use, the more trees we're cutting down. That means let's replace paper metal by emails. 
Number three, clean your shoes. Clean your shoes before going on a hike because the mud caked in your shoes have seeds that are bad for mother nature. Number four, only flush toilet paper. Only flush toilet paper because if you flush dog poop, cotton or other materials, it's gonna go down into the sewage and into a lake. The animals d will drink the water from the lake and can kill them or harm them. Like this bird here, like this bird here trying to swim. Five, visit wildlife parks. Visit wildlife parks because first, it's very fun. And second, because the money that you pay to go there is used to help and protect animals. Six, don't steal from nature. If you're taking a walk in nature with your clean shoes and find a log, don't take the log and bring it home because it's homes for other insects. Seven, save water. Let's only use the water we need. Let's not use a lot of water per day. Let me just tell you a little two facts. Only take a shower for five minutes and don't leave the tap running while you're brushing your teeth. Eight, flower power. Ask your parents to plant a garden full of local trees, plants, and flowers because it's homes for a lot of insects, worms, ants, bees, and other ones. Nine, avoid chemicals. All chemicals are bad, and there are some chemicals that are bad for Mother Nature. 10. Donate. Donating is always good, and if you have books, clothes, toys you don't use anymore, donate them, and like that, we're saving Mother Nature. Bye!